On our last couple videos from this series on wood design, I covered how to tab first the NDS. I went over all these tabs and then I covered the NDS supplement and we went over these tabs here as well. In today's video, we're going to cover the last one from this tabbing series on wood design, which is SpeedWiz. It's the special design provisions for wind and seismic. So for this one, again, it's a very short provision. So I'm just going to go over every each tab from this provision. And I hope you can benefit from it. The first one here is notation. Uh, you probably saw a pattern that I always like to have a notation tab in all my books and manuals and provisions. First is for me to quickly see what all the new variables are, variables that I may not know what they, they mean. So it's a quick way to just come back to this tab. And then also for terminology, you may not know what composite panels are or what the boundary element is according to this provision. So it's a good, good tab to, to have and to refer to every so often. The second one is one factor that is referenced in this manual, which is the repetitive member factor. This one is specific to speedways. You can see for different types here of stud sizes and different factors. Now we're going to cover basically two types of systems, which are diaphragms and then walls and mostly shear walls. First, for walls, for out-of-plane load or out-of-plane wind load, you have this table here that you can find the capacity of your wall or nominal uniform load, load capacities in PSF, which are here, all these different capacitors here, based on a lot of parameters, stud spacing, minimum stud spacing here, minimum thickness, the different sheathing, uh, types. So this is another table that has a lot of information and is very useful. Moving on to diaphragms, we have two tabs here. The first one is for the aspect ratio and the second one is for actually for the actual shear capacity of our diaphragm. So the maximum diaphragm aspect ratio is on this tab here, which you, we can see for all the different sheathing types, okay? And we're gonna have a similar one for shear walls as well, and we'll get there in a second. But before, for diaphragms still, we have now shear capacities. Let's take a look at it here. And it's based on a lot of different grades. We have the nail size, minimum fastener penetration, and all these different requirements and the table actually starts right here and you get your capacity for either seismic applications or for wind applications which is nice about wood design is the fact that you can get your capacities from a lot of tabulated values and then now we're going into shear walls and the first tab that i have here is this unblocked shear wall adjustment factor, CUB. Whenever I have a factor here on this menu, I try to tab it so that I can easily refer to it when solving a problem. And this is another one. Now, shear wall aspect ratio, which I had mentioned before. It's right here. And also, I have this adjustment factor, C sub O. And that's why in my tab, oops, and that's why in my tab I had AR and C sub O here, because I have two important things on this page. The next one is the just like diaphragms, I have my shear wall shear capacity. And you can see right here, it's another table for either seismic applications or wind applications. And then you have more tables related to that as well as you move down the page. Now this one here it's when you have a shear wall with in-plane shear and uplift and you have this first table here 
when sheathing or siding are used for both shear walls and wind uplift simultaneously and then it gives you requirements on the specific gravity you have that table you have this table here for bolt spacing for combined shear and uplift and then i believe you have one last table here also for combined shear and uplift in this case for 3 8 nominal wood structural panel the last tab that i have is just the commentary this one is especially important because speedways is so specific for wind and seismic provisions that if you're not familiar with anything from the provisions this is the first place you need to come which is describing why they provided certain things in the main part of the book or the provision this does it folks this does it for all three big boys here from wood design the specification the supplement and speedways now we need to put these guys to use right all these tabs that we tabbed up here so let me know in the comments below if there are specific wood design problems you want me to add to this playlist so that we can learn together with design and better ourselves for either professional exams or just better ourselves as engineers. And I'll see you next time.